Just like most of us, crypto billionaire Matthew Mellon didn't prepare for the day of his death. Billions of dollars are hidden in different accounts under different names in different places all over the world. So who has the passcodes to this treasure? Is someone just about to grab it all before we do? What skeletons lie in Matthew's closet and why did he hide his fortune? I guess you are dying to know how he died too. We are about to answer all of these questions. Hang on tight. Who was Matthew Mellon? Matthew Mellon was born on January 28, 1964 in New York City and raised in Manhattan, Palm Beach, Florida and Northeast Harbor, Maine. He studied management at the University of Pennsylvania's Wharton School. At the age of 21, he inherited trusts worth $25 million. Matthew became an investor, but he was also interested in politics and became involved in Republic Party politics. He has even served as the chairman of the finance committee of New York's Republican Party. But he didn't feel like people were taking him seriously enough because he is an heir to a rich fortune. He never worked himself up from the bottom, but he was determined to prove everyone wrong. Matthew then decided to embark on new business ventures. He came across Bitcoin. Matthew's friends and family warned him about investing in crypto, believing he was behaving erratically and risking it all. But he didn't listen. In 2012, he bought Bitcoin, but he sold it quickly after. Matthew's next step was to invest in Ripple, a company based in San Francisco. Ripple's goal is to use blockchain technology to facilitate international payments for financial firms and regulated banks. Its digital token is XRP. This is what Matthew had to say about Ripple. Crypto is scary and dark. It's anti-America. I am pro-America, pro-business and pro-bank. That's why I went with Ripple. It's $1 billion virtually for free. I actually have earned it because I was the only person who was willing to raise his hand. My family thought I was insane when I knew it was a home run. No one believed in Matthew or in Ripple, but he grabbed virtual handfuls of it. Out of an initial investment of $2 million, Mellon surfed the crypto boom, earning $1 billion in XRP at the height of the wave. In 2018, he stood on top of the world, or top of the virtual world at least his family. Matthew Mellon comes from two great banking families, the Mellons and the Drexels. His great-great-great-grandfather, Judge Thomas Mellon, set up the Mellon Bank in Pittsburgh. The bank is now part of the Bank of New York Mellon Corporation. On his mother's side, Matthew is the direct descendant of Anthony Joseph Drexel, a banker and owner of the investment firm that became Drexel Burnham Lambert. The Bank of New York Mellon Corporation has an annual revenue of $18 billion. Drexel Burnham Lambert collapsed in 1990. Such is the shaky world of finance. Pressure has always been on every man to be successful like his forebearers, but Matthew's father Carl Mellon suffered from depression. He committed suicide in 1983, just before Matthew's high school graduation. Matthew became the patriarch of Mellon Corporation. In 1998, Matthew met his first wife Tamara at an Alcoholics Anonymous meeting. She is the co-founder of the Jimmy Choo Shoe brand. Tamara thought he was incredibly handsome and funny. They married in 1999 and share a daughter, Minty. Matthew and Tamara's marriage started to crumble once his addictions triggered hers. They divorced six years later. Matthew remarried in 2010. He has a second wife, Nicole Handley. She is a clothing designer. The couple has two children, a daughter, Olympia, and a son, Force. But Matthew and Nicole divorced in 2015 due to his drug problems. And now poor Matthew is dead lavish lifestyle. Matthew Mellon lived a life with riches, pleasures and luxury. That's the only life he ever knew. Technically, he never actually needed to work. He had money waiting for him since the day he was born. Matthew Mellon enjoyed living a luxurious lifestyle. He owned nine sports cars, including an exotic collection of Mercedes Benzes and Ferraris. He also had a private yacht. His watch was worth more than I make in a year. In his will, his eldest daughter inherited a $100,000 Andy Warhol and his family's priceless silver collection. In 2021, he was renting a home in Hollywood for $150,000 a month. This futuristic looking home was treated like a toy. Matthew didn't take good care of it. He caused significant damage by installing large speakers in the upstairs master bedroom. He obviously loved to rock and roll at night. He was constantly hosting huge parties with spoilt brat guests damaging the property, furniture and furnishings. The damage was around $670,000. Matthew didn't pay for the utilities, the skyrocketing electricity bills, 
and the long-suffering, miserably underpaid staff. He left debts of $53,000. Being so rich and unruly made him a target. For his own security, Matthew purchased a bulletproof car resembling a tank. It didn't save him in the end. Nothing could. Mellon also enjoyed spending time with other celebrities, including Donald Trump and Kit Kennedy, Robert F. Kennedy Jr.'s daughter. No wonder he needed top-notch security. Mellon was telling the world that he was living a responsible life. But was he really? Let's find out. His addiction problems. One issue with being rich is that you can afford pretty much anything, even bad stuff. Matthew Mellon became addicted to opioid pills and other substances for decades. Just like his father, Matthew had bipolar disorder. He was taking a staggering 80 pills of Oxycontin. This is the best-selling opioid on the market. Matthew wasn't ashamed of sharing his problems with the public. It was clear that he was asking for help. In 2014, Mellon claimed to have been clean from drugs and alcohol for five years. But by 2016, he was taking Oxycontin and recovering from surfing injury. This is what he said. The doctors kept writing prescriptions. They were like smarties. Oxycontin is like legal heroin and it needs to be addressed. Guess poor Matthew should have addressed it himself. Mellon cancelled his big birthday bash because he finally realised that he needed some help for his drug addiction. So he went back and forth between LA and Cancun for treatment. Mellon's personal chef in LA, Daniela Evangelista, claims that he wanted to get better and eat healthier. He even had two doctors visiting him every day. But he didn't feel better. In fact, he was feeling worse. Matthew was desperately looking for alternative treatments and found one in Mexico. He was attracted to therapies that are illegal in the US. Drug-induced hallucinatory therapies to be precise. Clear Sky Recovery in Mexico is a clinic specializing in Ibogaine therapy. Ibogaine is a plant-based medicine with psychedelic properties that comes from a West African tree transplanted into Mexico. The Clear Sky Recovery Clinic advertises itself as the world's foremost expert in medically-based Ibogaine treatment. In October 2016, Matthew experimented with Ibogaine in Cancun. He claimed that he had a spiritual crossing and recommended it to all of his friends. His death. Matthew Mellon passed away on April 16, 2018, at the age of 54. Just before his death, Mellon tried to book himself into a rehabilitation center in Cancun, Mexico. Unfortunately, Mellon never got there and the help that he needed. He didn't check into the facility and died the same day. He was found in his hotel room. His cause of death was a heart attack after experimenting with Ayuska, a hallucinogenic drink. There are unanswered questions surrounding his death. Sadly, Mellon suffered from depression, ambition and stress. He could never escape from any of that. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put poor Matthew Mellon together again. But here's the issue. His digital keys to his XRP are locked in cold storage in different locations around the US and under other people's names. He didn't have a will. Long years have passed since his death, but Matthew's estate is still trying to come up with the money to pay off his taxes and debts to other companies. He still owes $964,000 for the estate he was renting. So what will happen to his $500 million of XRP digital currency? Well, that's up in the air for now. It's sorted in private keys and seeds in very secure places, including Ripple, desktop wallets, and hardware wallets. There could be anything between $250 and $500 million that may be lost forever. It will be very difficult to find the rest. Let us know in the comments what you think will happen to it and who will get their hands on it. Would you like some of it? What would you do if you had it?